Hey guys, it's Professor Sears. We're going to go ahead and do a little bit of wound care today just to give you an idea of the skill itself. I'm not going to go through all the steps on the checklist, but we'll talk through the actual procedure that you have to perform. So I have a couple of cotton tipped applicators here from the kit. I have a pair of just regular plain old gloves. I have my drape for my patient. These are going to be my sterile gloves for today. What I did is I drew a spot on one of them. This is going to be my clean hand. Sometimes you'll hear it said dirty hand. This one with no spot is going to be my sterile hand. So you're going to notice only the sterile hand will go back into the kit. Um, I also have my wound care kit. It's a little bit different than yours. The main difference is that I don't have a sterile saline pour bottle. So what I have done instead, open this for a second here. Okay, I've got an ABD pad. I have a cotton tipped applicator. If you don't have one, you can drop one into your sterile field. I've got a whole bunch of gauze here. I've got some tape to put the dressing on at the very end. Um, and this is gonna represent this little cup here, my saline pour bottle. You do have one in your kit, so it makes it really easy to stay sterile. All right, so those are the items that we have. I'm gonna just repackage this here and we'll get started. All right, so my patient has a wound here. We're going to be using this one here today, okay? So for this, it does have to be some kind of opening that I need to pack. If it was just a little scratch, I can't do that. So I'm gonna go ahead, I would put on my clean gloves. Okay, I've already washed my hands when I came into the room. I'm donning clean gloves here. They've been well used. If we can get them on. Okay, so all of this is gonna wait until later. But what I do need to do, I need a cotton tipped applicator. So I've got a couple here. Okay, I've exposed my patient's wound. I can go ahead and drape them now if I would like because I'm gonna be irrigating in a little bit. But I need to measure the dimensions of this wound. You always measure head to toe first. So I take my little cotton tipped applicator and I measure the largest part. So it's about this big. I can then compare that. There's a little ruler here. So I can see the size, we'll say about 30 centimeters. Then I can do the width, okay? It's about three centimeters as well. And then the last piece is the depth. So I can put this all the way down into the wound, this long, and again, compare. So the depth is four and a half centimeters. So three by three by four and a half. I'm also looking at the wound. I'm looking for eschar, which would be dead skin. I'm looking to see with my Q-tip, do I have any tunneling under the edges here? Meaning the wound kind of goes under rather than just straight down. So I'm checking for tunneling. Um, this one, we could say there's no tunneling here. All right, so at this point, I can trash this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my patient ready for the procedure. So I'll show you guys how to drop things into the sterile field with this as well. We may or may not. We'll see if it works. All right. So at this point, I can get rid of these gloves. I do have to do hand hygiene again because I just touched a possibly dirty wound, so I've got to wash my hands again. 20 to 30 seconds of scrubbing with the um, alcohol-based sanitizer, or I could do soap and water. All right, so at this point, before I get sterile, I've got to set up my package here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up right here. Move this so I can reach. When you open your package, you've got to have everything else ready. So my patient's exposed, their wound is available, because once I get sterile, I can't touch anything else. Um, so at this point, when you open your package, you do need to orient it so you're opening the first one away from you because I have to reach across the kit to do it. So I don't wanna reach across a completely open kit. Next, you'll do a side, doesn't matter which one, another side, and then you'll be opening the last one here. Okay, I don't wanna to touch anything but this one inch border. Make sure you open it so it stays open. If you have to peel the top off your kit because it's not wrapped in sterile, you need to peel it all the way open so it doesn't flop back over in your kit because if I've touched the edge and peeled it and it closes, it's contaminated, you have to start again. All right, so at this point, I have to go ahead and put on my sterile gloves. 
When you do this, you want to make sure you are not on this sterile field because I touched the outside, this would contaminate this. So we're going to reach across. Normally, I would not be this far away. Okay, I am right-handed, so I like to put my right glove on first. If you're left-handed, do the opposite, okay? I can touch this cuff because this is going to be against the inside of my hand. And I can use this to help me pull on my glove and get a little well worn. One thing you have to be careful, my cuff is still a little bit folded. That's okay. I can't touch the edge because I might touch the sterile part of my glove. So this is fine. Just leave it. Next, I'm going to grab under the cuff here with my finger. Sterile can touch sterile. Put this one on. Okay. One finger didn't make it in. That's okay because I can still touch this. I haven't touched the patient yet. So I'm going to go ahead now and do my patient care. Okay, so at this point I've got my sterile gloves on. I'm going to go ahead and prepare my kit here. So this one's not contaminated yet. Sterile can touch sterile. I haven't touched my patient. So I'm going to slide this so you can see. Actually, I'm going to throw this away. When you remove this, that one inch outside border is contaminated. But you can grab from the middle and move it out of your sterile field. Okay, Best to have a trash can nearby rather than throwing things on the ground. So my sterile kit, I just want to kind of organize it here so I can find what I need to. Um, so I've got a cotton tipped applicator, I've got some tape, I would open up my sterile saline and I'm going to pour it in this compartment here. What I can do then, I can take quite a few of these gauze and I can put them in here. So I'm going to keep a couple out because I've got to blot the wound dry after we irrigate it. So we'll leave a couple out, and then your order you're just going to follow. If it's supposed to be a wet to dry dressing, then we'll pack it with wet dressings. If it's supposed to be dry, we would pack it with dry. Today we'll do wet. All right, so I've got some soaked in saline. I've got some dry ones. At this point, I'm ready to go ahead and dedicate my sterile hand can touch the kit. Once I irrigate with this hand though, there's a possibility for splash. So this hand becomes considered contaminated. It's clean, it's not sterile anymore. So this can only touch the patient. So the first thing that I would like to do is if they have packing, I'm gonna remove it. But we were saying we already did that when we measured the wound. So, um, and I don't wanna contaminate myself. So wound is ready to go. So the first thing that I wanna do, I'm gonna do what's called an exaggerated drop. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drop my wet gauze into my hand. Notice I drop from kind of a height. I don't want to have a possibility where I touch this hand. Next I'm going to irrigate the wound. So I'm just going to squeeze this over the wound and then this would become trash. Sterile hand goes back in the kit for another wet gauze. Exaggerated drop. Squeeze it over the wound and we'll do one more. So sterile hand in the kit. Exaggerated drop squeeze it over the wound and you have to verbalize that once the uh, drain fluid is clear we're going to go ahead and move on to the next part so i need to blot the outside of the wound dry so i'm going to take a dry gauze exaggerated drop this hand i'm just blotting around the outside i'm not putting it in the wound okay sterile hand in the kit exaggerated drop blot this dry Okay, and we're going to do a little bit of magic so I have enough gauze for you. So the next piece is I have to pack this wound. So my order, I'm going to do a wet to dry. So what I can do, this hand has to be sterile. I don't want this hand that's dirty to grab the gauze and pack it and seal it inside that wound because I might seal an, an infection. So what I want to do, this hand is going to assist me. So sterile hand in the kit. I am going to hand the end of this cotton tipped applicator to my dirty hand. That way my sterile hand can touch this sterile gauze that's going to go inside the wound. You want to use this to control it and pack it inside the wound. That way it's not really touching a lot of stuff on the outside. So this one is packed in. I can't fit another one in there very easily, so I'm gonna say it's packed, but on yours you guys should do a couple. That way you have the practice of going back into the kit using this cotton tipped applicator to guide it in, okay? So you pack it with that one. 
All right, at this point, I'm done with this one. I'm gonna grab this ABD pad and I'm gonna lay it over the wound, okay? And then at this point, I know it won't quite stay, but at this point, I'm done being sterile because this is completely covered. So I need to tape down all four sides of the dressing. I need to, I believe you guys have a label in your kit, fill out the label and you're gonna stick it on that dressing as well or on the tape of the dressing. That way everybody knows when you last did the dressing change. Um, and those are really the key pieces. So it's keeping sterile, sterile. This is the only one that can touch the kit after I initially set it up and start irrigating. And this is my hand for patient care. And that's it. Thank you.